Why is it that most people having heart attacks have normal cholesterol levels? Every day on social media, I get asked this question. Why then? Why does most people have normal cholesterol? It's not the cholesterol. It's this. It's that. It's the other thing. So this is a super simple question and answer. The problem is you've got these online grifters that want to sell you a dream. They want to sell you some conspiracy that the whole world is conspiring against you and that it's not the cholesterol and it's some... Um, Big sugar, big pharma, big government conspiracy theory. Your doctors want to keep you sick so that they can kill you and keep profiting off of you and a whole bunch of nonsense. So how about you just look at the data and the science? Now, if you're not convinced by data and science and you want to believe conspiracies, this is not the video or the channel for you. You are welcome to go follow conspiracy theorists and medfluencers who literally have no idea what they're talking about. If you don't know who I am, I'm Dr. Allo. I'm a double board certified cardiologist. I teach at two different medical schools. I teach cardiology fellows every single day. These are future cardiologists. And I've taught at various medical conferences around the country and world and online through my various social media platforms, whether it's short form stuff or these longer form videos. So when someone is having a heart attack, they can be divided up into two types of people. And if you do look at the studies, they do show that anywhere between 50 and 73% of people who walk through the door having a heart attack have quote unquote normal cholesterol levels. Now, the problem with this is first of all, the normals are too high. Previously, we used to think that an LDL cholesterol of 130 was normal and a total cholesterol of up to 200 was normal. These guidelines have changed. In 2018, we want everyone under 100 for LDL cholesterol and under 150 for total cholesterol. Now, why did this change? Because the data is there. The lower your LDL cholesterol, regardless of how you lower it, whether it was done through you know genetic mutations, whether we lowered it with medications, whether you lowered it with diet, whether you low lowered it with lifestyle exercise, randomized control trial trials of medications, whatever it is, however you lowered your LDL cholesterol, we know that the lower the LDL cholesterol, and I, you know I'm going to put all the graphics up here if you're listening on audio format. Highly recommend you watch the video version of this on YouTube. But if you have lower LDL cholesterol you have less atherosclerosis, less heart disease, less, less death, less all-cause mortality, less pretty much everything. And the data is pretty clear on that. I don't think that's debatable. If you want to debate it, <laughs> we have a problem. You are basically telling me you are anti-science and anti-evidence. But we know that at an LDL cholesterol of about 60 milligrams per deciliter or higher, most people are probably laying down plaque. And we now believe in this thing called cholesterol years. Dr. Michael Shapiro published on cholesterol years. If you multiply your age by your LDL cholesterol, that is called cholesterol years. A 40-year-old person who has had an LDL cholesterol of 125, 125 times 40, that's 5,000. The cutoff is about 5,000. Over 5,000, you have plaque. Below 5,000, you, you have plaque. It's just not as bad yet. So we know that about 60 milligrams per deciliter is about the cutoff of where uh, people start laying down plaque. Now, this was shown in the PISA trial, the pr pr uh, prevention of early subclinical atherosclerosis. This was young people with no other risk factors, no metabolic syndrome, no obesity, no calcium, no insulin resistance, you know, super active, lean people, you know, average age. I think median age was like 40. So like half the people were younger than that. And they looked at just their LDL cholesterols. People who had a normal LDL of 110 at the time that was normal, 54% of them, or I'm sorry, 45% of them had atherosclerosis. If you go to 130, nor, normal, 130, you had a 54% of those people had atherosclerosis. If you go up to 150, you had 68% uh, of people, almost 70% of people had atherosclerosis that was not yet clinical it was subclinical it's still not giving you symptoms it's just brewing in your arteries the worst part about it is that of those people that had atherosclerosis 63 percent of them had it in more than one arterial bed meaning you didn't just have it in your carotids you had it in your femorals and your coronaries and your kidneys you know wherever all these coronary beds the arterial beds that they measured you had it there so 
that's one thing. The normals were just too high. So people say, well, most people, 70% of people having heart attacks uh, had, nor had normal cholesterol. So first of all, the normals are too high. I guarantee you by today's standards, that would not be the case. Now, the other part is that some of these people were on lipid lowering therapy. The vast majority of people who have heart attacks are men are usually in their 50s and 60s, women 60s and 70s, and then end up. So, you know, 55 and up on the men's side, 65 and up on the female side. Now, of course, there are people who have really high LDL cholesterol much earlier, you know, have heart attacks in their 30s and 40s. The familial hypercholesterolemia people have super, you know, high genetic cholesterol or lipoprotein A. The other thing that these studies don't check is lipoprotein A. Somebody may have had a normal LDL. Let's say it's like really low. Let's say it's like 80, you know, 70. Their LDL 70, but they had a heart attack. Well, their lipoprotein A is greater than 600. And if you watch my lipoprotein A lecture on here, you know that that is three to six times more atherogenic than normal lipoproteins. And there's visuals and there's graphics. I really recommend you check that one out. So many of these people are already on lipid lowering therapy, but the problem is in the United States and in other places, we don't put people on lipid lowering therapy till it's too late. Most people are not going to put a 40 year old on lipid lowering therapy if their LDL is 110, 120, 130. They might not even put a 50-year-old because of the 10-year risk calculators that we've always been taught to use and a lot of the electronic medical records now have those built in. Your risk of a heart attack over the next 10 years might be 3% and it's not going to recommend you know, lipid-lowering therapy. Finally, when you cross that threshold of 7.5%, then it'll recommend it. But you've had like 40 or 50 years of atherosclerosis building up. If your LDL is above 60 milligrams per deciliter, you're building plaque. If your cholesterol years adds up to more than 5,000, you could even argue 3 to, to 4,000, you have plaque. So now you have all this plaque, you finally get put on Lipitor, and then a few years later you have a heart attack, but your LDL is like 70 because you're on Lipitor, and they told you you need to be under 100 now. So that is another contributor. Of those 70% of people that are having heart attacks with normal cholesterol, it's because a lot of them got put on lipid-lowering therapy too late. Also, Michael Shapiro, Peter Toth, and even Dr. Dayspring and a few other people, they wrote this wonderful article, and it was called that we need to try to prevent atherosclerosis much earlier. They said that if you had a choice of lowering your LDL cholesterol for 30 years only, would you rather have it lower between the ages of 20 and 50 or between 50 and 80? They all said it would be between 20 and 50. If you had, if you could pick having an LDL cholesterol of, let's say, 50 for 30 years, you would want it to be those 30 years between the age of 20 and 50 as opposed to 50 to 80 because by the time you're 50, you have so much plaque, we're just trying to piece you back together again. So keep that in mind. Of the cholesterol, of the lipid-lowering therapy naive people, people who are not on statins, not on medications, what happened with those people when you kind of split those out in the studies when somebody has a heart attack, it is in the guidelines that you have to put a Lipitor 80 in their mouth the second they walk through the door. Most academic centers, most places who do guideline, you know, treatment therapy, the Prove It trial, it's called Prove It, P-R-O-V-E-I-T, Prove It trial or Timmy 22B trial, demonstrated that if you give somebody a Lipitor 80 the second they walk through the door, their risk of mortality goes down by 16%, or I think it was repeat CV events, I think. No, I think it was mortality. CV mortality, maybe. Um, goes down by 16% even within those first 14 days. That's why it's important and made it into the guidelines where the second somebody walks in, they get it at Lipitor 80. So that will drop most people's LDL cholesterol anywhere between 35 to maybe 50 50%. So, or now they do recommend also Crestor 40, you know, high intensity statins, you know, atorvastatin or rosuvastatin, Crestor or Lipitor. Crestor 40, which is the higher dose, will drop most people's lipid levels anywhere from like as low as 35% up to maybe 60% in some people. So you're getting an immense amount of lipid lowering the second you walk through the door. But then they looked at all comers who did not get any lipid lowering therapy, who were not already on lipid lowering therapy, and they went back and they looked at what happens to people's LDLs, their HDLs, their triglycerides, and all of that the second you know they are having a heart attack. They found that on day one, so they found that over those first nine days, most people's LDL cholesterol dropped anywhere from 
15, 20%, up to like 40 to 50%, depending on the person, depending on their genetics, etc. So you automatically had like a 10 to 30 milligram per deciliter drop in your LDL. So let's say your LDL was 110, or let's say it was like 130. Now all of a sudden it's like 90. Oh, it's normal. It's normal, but they had a heart attack. Well, it's been like 130 for 40, 50 years, right? 55 years. Um, the other scenario is somebody whose LDL cholesterol hovers around 90, uh, which is, or I'm sorry, hovers around 110, and now they come in and it drops by like 20 milligrams, now they're around 90, right? So those scenarios happen. They found that on day one, most LDL drops by about 9%, triglycerides go up by about 17%, and then by day four, five, seven, eight, nine, and I'll put the, the graphics up here, like maybe on this side somewhere. Um, these are all graphics from my cholesterol book. There's a whole chapter on this. Why do most people have heart attacks have normal cholesterol? Because studies have shown that 50 to 73% of people who walk through the door have normal quote unquote cholesterol normal defined however you want to define it whether they're on lipid lowering therapy whether they're on their statin naive whether they were normal by the old guidelines or normal by the old ways or just actually just normal based on today's guidelines so it's a whole chapter in my cholesterol book if you go to drallo.net slash cholesterol you can read all about it get some previews look at the chapters look at the beautiful graphics and this is an entire chapter out of that book but i'll put the graphics from that book uh, right here so you do have a concomitant rise in triglycerides. It's an acute phase reactant. Triglycerides will go up when you're under severe stress, like something like a heart attack. So a lot of these medfluencers and social media, you know, nonsense peddlers will say, oh, it's not the cholesterol, it's the triglycerides. When every single study we've done that has lowered triglycerides in and of itself by themselves has not shown benefit. Whereas if there came with it a lowering of ApoB or LDL cholesterol, then there was a benefit that tracked with the lower uh, ApoB. The lower the ApoB, the more benefit. Just like in any other trial, regardless of triglycerides, regardless of HDL, regardless of anything else, the more you lower ApoB, regardless of anything else, the less risk you have. So those are the reasons why when somebody walks through the door, they may or may not have abnormal or high cholesterol. They may be on lipid lowering therapy. They may have some genetics. Um, they may have gotten a Crestor 40 or Lipitor 80 when they walk through the door. They may have been abnormal based on the old guidelines. You know, it just, there's a lot of reasons why this happens. Plus, when you're having a heart attack, your numbers drop by as much as like 40% sometimes. Um, actually, not sometimes. In the st studies, 40% decrease, 20 to 40% decrease in LDL cholesterol with a 15 to maybe 20, 25% increase in triglycerides. Acute phase reactants, this is well known. Your thyroid is off, your uh, cortisol hormones are off, your you know adrenal corticoids, like everything. There's a whole phase of these things called acute phase reactants that increase and or decrease when you are under immense stress, like you're septic, you're having a heart attack, you're fighting off cancer, you know, whatever it might be. There's this whole host of things called acute phase reactants. So send this video to somebody who needs to hear this because there's a lot of people out there that think literally if you have normal cholesterol, you're, you can still have a heart attack. When we know that over time, based on all of the data, the lower your LDL cholesterol, the for the longer, for the most amount of years, the less the, improb the probability of you having a heart attack or stroke. This is not like debatable. This is like... There's a lot of things in science that we still could question and wonder about. This is not one of them. High cholesterol was demonstrated in 1913. When you infused rabbits or humans or any other way with high, L high lipoproteins or fed them a high saturated fat diet or high cholesterol diet even, they had fatty streaks within hours. Um, especially when you infused li li low density lipoproteins into people, fatty streaks developed within hours, not people. I think that one was rabbits. But either way, I think you guys get the point. This is one of these very well-established medical things. There's always going to be influencers out there trying to fool you. We don't know why. You know, like I said, a lot of times people just want to feel safe and they feel like something is out to get you. There's this mystical, magical thing out there that has more power than you. And that, that is why um, this happened. So this is absolutely not true. There's no such you know, superpower that does this. Yes, people who walk through the door may have normal or even low levels of cholesterol for any number of reasons. They may have already been on lipid lowering therapy. 
they may have gotten lipid lower dose therapy the second they got through the door, or it's an acute phase reactant and they're reacting to the stress that they are under. If you like stuff like this, join my community, dralonet slash community. We talk about this every single day through the app. You can talk to me, text me, shoot me your lipids, shoot me your CT scans, coronary scores. Um, we do a weekly live Zoom meeting uh, every Monday night. You can ask me questions live. It's super fun. Me and my friends will help guide you through your weight loss journeys, longevity, cholesterol, lipids, all that stuff. And it's a lot of fun. Um, if you use the code one month, you will get in for free. Cancel anytime. Nobody would know. Try it out. See if you like it. If you do, awesome. If not, no big deal. Maybe it's not for you. It's for someone else. Anyways, I'll catch you in the next episode. Please send this to people who need to know how this works.